What I particularly enjoy about flying hockey is the fact that in many respects, we're, we're suited up and dressed up like every other regular hockey player. It's, you feel the sense of freedom. It gives you such a positive energy and you can, you can just forget about everything else that's going on in your, in your life and focus truly on this, on this sport. Blind hockey, the sport itself, has been over 50 years in Canada. And about six years ago, it came to St. Louis. Right on, all right, let's hit the ice. The rules of the blind hockey deviate slightly from the regular hockey to accommodate visual impairments. But the sport, it really does feel like regular hockey. I think that's, that's the biggest advantage that we got is we are just as intense when it comes to playing the sport. We like to go as fast as we possibly can. So the puck, it's steel and it has eight ball bearings in it, which it's nice and loud. But when the puck stops, those balls stop moving inside the puck. And so the puck stops making noise. When that puck stops moving, you know, you'll see it in a game, it'll look just like regular hockey. And then the puck stops moving, and all of a sudden, nobody knows where it is, you know? You've got the flow going back and forth, and it's a fast pace, and then the puck, they lose that puck, and you can see instantly the effect that it has on the game. Behind you. Keep going. We already have difficulty finding pucks that are not in motion, but if, if it gets dented enough, Eventually, the ball bearings have limited range of motion within the puck, so the volumes just kind of die off. They don't last too long. They're, they're, you know, they're made out of a thin metal, and eventually, you know, they'll crack or, or just go dead, and they're not in use anymore. And they're about fifty or sixty dollars a piece. And there's only one way to get them, and that's through USA Hockey. And they only get them, you know, once a year, and they distribute it through all the clubs and things. So we got to kind of forced to hold on to them even though they're in pretty bad shape sometimes. We are in the PATH suite, which stands for the People and Technology Horizon Suite. And it's situated within the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Building on SLU's campus. We're interested in how to infuse touch um, and touch feedback back into technologies and innovations that we use today. It's a fun way to think about engineering, for sure. <laughs> I wanted to see about putting a like a band in the middle. Right. So I'm very involved the within the, the blind community and the sort of St. Louis Regional Network that's associated with it. So we started getting acquainted with the team. We started going to the practices. We met with the coaches and the players and really started feeling out how does the game work? What's the feel of the game? Currently, the puck they use is about a 40-year-old design and it it, it works for what it does, um, but there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of drawbacks with it. And we shopped around some initial ideas. We said, you know, we heard what you said. Here's what we're, here's what we're thinking. What do you think? That's not as, 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 um, as dense and Currently it takes heavy as I thought it was going to be. The enthusiasm of the players just really sold me because no matter, even the, just the smallest improvements to the puck made them so excited to what I was going to be producing. We were really blessed because we have one of the blind hockey players here at St. Louis University. Not bad. Still pretty audible. You hear it? Yeah. So that was a natural fit. He's just a great person. He's tech focused. He has the right mindset to really think innovatively. So he was an immediate ad. As a blind hockey player myself, I'm super passionate about finding ways that will enhance the quality of the sport. Oh yeah, I don't know if I talked to you about this, um, but there was a lot of different um, feedback on the on the buzzer frequency. Oh really? Actually, yeah. So we've been kind of bouncing off ideas of how we could take this puck project into two different directions. I think we're pretty clear on where we want to go as far as the puck development goes. So this is the current puck, and this cage is meant to wrap around the puck here to protect it here. And then so these holes are designed to basically um, allow the sound to still travel out. We're also working on kind of using these rings here, integrating electronics on the inside of the puck here um, to house those electronics and those vibration motors. So as the puck's sliding, it'll stop moving and then kind of 
vibrate and rattle here. So even when it stops on the ice, it's still going to be giving auditory feedback that players can then track and then um, you know pass it to their teammates. Yeah. The fully electronic yeah, puck quiet. uses a circuit board, two 9-volt batteries, a speaker, and then an amplifying cone. And so with that, this circuit board basically develops that white noise static. The one thing we've been working on is kind of, you know, developing the puck to have what's called dynamic feedback. So as it's moving, it's going to make a different noise. Um, so if it's moving faster, it'll make a different noise. So if I turn this on here and shake it, it's going to have a different feedback of if it's slowing down. And so that lets players know if someone hits a really hard slap shot, hey, this puck's moving fast at me, I better get ready, while it has that kind of slower, what's called a duty cycle of it being on and off and kind of alternating between the two. I think you're on to something. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. The hope is, is that they will have a hockey puck that everyone in the league, both in the U.S. and Canada, that can last a long time, meets the sound quality that they like, and is ultimately effective in the games. I think the work we do, I hope, will, will really benefit the greater blind hockey community. This is very much a growing sport. And from, I feel like the outcome would more so yield to other adaptive sports as well. I'm really excited and it's going to be the next big thing. Having a, a standardized puck that everyone uses and that everyone's happy with that continuously makes noise would help um, us on our journey towards the Paralympics. Let's get it, boys. There's something about ice skating, and you combine that with the, the, the stick handling with the, the puck that makes noise and, and passing to other players. It's super rewarding. Nice.